Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, back with part six of the multi-part video series on building the AMF float lock vise. You will recall that the last thing I did in the previous video, go back and watch that, is to make the handle, that's this crank handle, up to this point, but it's still not finished. So the next thing I need to do before I make the bend, and again this is the crank handle, before I make the bend is to mill it down so that that is a quarter inch thick. Then I will round this off and then make the bend. Order of operations is pretty important. It's kind of a tricky little part really. I'm at the Bridgeport mill and the workpiece is mounted in a square collet block and a 5 8 5 C collet and notice I've got a couple marks on there and that's not too critical but with this three-quarter end mill I'm going to mill this down into a flat and since this is 5 8 thick I need to remove that's 3 16 from each side so I will mill one side and then rotate it 180 degrees and mill the second side. And now I will cut it off. This will be 5 8 long. And I think I'll face it as well. I may have mentioned this before, but note that there's a radius on this piece and a radius on this piece. Now there is two ways to do that. And one would be with this radius tool that I made. And this will be featured in a separate video in uh, one or two parts there. One or two parts away is what I mean. So uh, I'm going to show you how to make that. And I am going to use this in a few minutes when I start to make this piece. However, back to this piece, I'm not sure if it would work this way. And possibly I could have uh, machined that radius on before I made the flats. But I'm going to do this another way just simply to show you that there are uh, several ways to do things and that uh, I know this is kind of a difficult project in itself which would take several hours so you may not want to do that but you may be interested in how it is done. Next I need to make that bend so I'm going to try to get it red hot. Now I've only got a plumber's torch. I do not have oxyacetylene but just going to heat it in this area and hope that it bends in the right area because I have trouble localizing the heat with the plumber's prestolite type torch. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me cool it off. Well, I did get the bend to occur just where I wanted. You know, the problem was when I made the prototype is that one of my tanks, my little acetylene tanks, 
was virtually empty so hooking up another one I had much greater heat. Yes, the big tank is virtually empty. I have to take that down for a refill. I had this one in the garage for 20 years, that little one, and I wasn't even sure if it was full, but it is full to the brim. And now turning my attention to this piece, it is one and a half long, and of course it's 5 8 stock as well. So there's the material. Let's get at it. All right, I faced the end and polished it just a little bit. And this is going to be, again, kind of a complicated part because of that radius. And uh, that's optional. You can do it other ways just with a nice chamfer on it. But in the following video, or let's see, this is number six. So a number seven or eight, I'm not sure. But there'll be a totally dedicated video to making this hardened and tempered tool steel radius cutting tool. And that's for... A 5 16 radius which would be 5 8 stock I have two of those so one is already mounted in the block the tool block so let's put this uh, into the three jaw and put it to work be sure and watch that other video okay let's cut a radius on a 5 8 bar if you have the right tool and we call this a forming tool and there's always a lot of chatter with that, that type of tool and that radius turned out just fine now this piece is inch and a half long so I'm going to go ahead and mark this and then cut it off and face it to the right length to that length inch and a half then we'll step over to the milling machine and mill this slot. The work is in the milling machine vise. You can't see it, but there is a V groove here holding it perfectly vertical. Again, that's 5 8 stock. It's a quarter inch end mill. So I need to find the edge of it and then move in 437 thousandths, which is the radius of the cutter and a radius of the work. So let me find the edge, and I'm just going to use a piece of paper to do that this time. There are 500 ways to locate an edge. That has been one of them. Now raise the tool out of the way and I need to move it in 437 thousand. So I'm doing that with the digital readout which is not within your sight range. I am now on the center line of the work. Now I will touch off, lock the quill, back out and I'm going to take going to take a series of cuts back and forth back and forth until I am down to my full depth which is going to be 625 thousandths I'll do a hundred thousandths at a time there is the first one hundred thousand Do not remove the work from the vise till you're sure you have the right dimensions and there's the correct depth and does the mating piece fit? Yes it does and now I can take it out. Next I have to drill or ream a hole and that's to be 3 8 depth to be determined, be determined here in just a second. I'll do that on the lathe, but I got a question for you. Doesn't it seem ridiculous all the effort I went to get that radius, making a tool and the setup and everything, and then mill most of it away? There's only about five eighths of an inch of that shaft protruding. There, I'm using that word again. 
but I'm going to drill that hole a little deeper than that so I don't have to deal with about even deeper than that I think. As a matter of fact in the original piece it appears to go almost the way all the way through like it broke through just a little bit. You know what, this is going to be kind of a tricky hole to drill, but you just saw me lay it out and then I center punched it and before putting the other piece in place, and I have to drill through both of them at the same time, this is a piece of five thousandths shim stock. You could use paper. That'll keep the two from clashing as they turn. Okay, I had to put my thinking cap on for this one, and I decided not to drill both of them at the same time. I'm going to drill a through hole on this piece. Well, how to get it in there straight so it's not oriented? This is just a stiff rule, not a flexible one. Just laying it like that with the work held as such with my finger as I tighten the vise. Now this is a number one center drill. That's a little one. And this is an eighth inch bit, a stubby one. So I'll drill through both pieces. And you know what? I'm going to uh, have to put my magnifiers on for that. Alright, I think I got, got it lined up pretty well. And now I'll drill all the way through, eighth inch. Now I thought maybe this piece would fit right in there for alignment, but it just doesn't fit into the vise. I do not know why. They're both pieces of 5.8 stock. That piece of shim stock is in place, of course you can't see it, and both pieces are being gripped by the vise, I think, and I aligned it all and I hope that it will drill through to the other one. A lot of hope and prayer going on during something like this, so I'm going to go ahead and drill it eighth inch, let's see what happens. All right, that fits up nice. Now there'll be a, a tighter feel to that once the roll pins are put in. That's just a temporary pin. And I took the liberty of laying out the next hole on the same center line as that, and that's 3 8 in. But that also will be drilled through both pieces and a pin driven in. Now I'm also going to use just a little bit of shim stock right here so that I don't get a binding fit. I want it to be a, a free, possibly even just a little bit of play. Admittedly a rather awkward looking Rube Goldberg setup here, but this uh, tool bit here in the slot will assure that the hole will be perpendicular to the slot. These are just half inch bits that happen to be the right diameter. Well there it is. The actual vise is about done other than some finishing touches. 
coloring it or painting it or whatever I decide to do and put in the real pins and uh, yeah, and it's done and it's looking pretty good and it works just fine this was a long episode hope you liked it be sure and tune in for the next one because I still have this part to make and the corner clamp to make so there's probably at least two more episodes actually three and the following episode of this one which will be number seven will be the making of this tool hope you liked the video this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now see you next time